وحل الأقدة وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي السلام عليكم everybody I'm Naz one of your hosts for today's second book club meeting I hope you all are doing well with this new year for today we have a remarkable guest coming to speak with us about an unparalleled topic but before we get to that you might be thinking what is so special for today our heritage so Alina what can you tell us about the events today Assalamu alaikum, I'm Alina, and the book that we're talking about for today, it's called The Origin and Early History of Muslims in Kerala by J.B.P. Moore. So if you haven't had a chance to read it, that's fine, but we'll be talking about it together as it's an insightful look into our shared history. But before we introduce our guest speaker for today, we want to take a second to talk about why this topic is so important to us as youth. It's easy for us to feel disconnected from from the place where our parents and our grandparents grew up and lived their lives. And I found that learning about our history is a great way to feel connected again. As an American Malayali Muslim, this book grants us the knowledge of how we, become, how we became prominent in India, the history, the makings, and the results. After reading this book, I was more aware of my culture and background. Just like Alina said, let's use this amazing opportunity to feel connected again with who we are and who we are to become. <clears throat> so with that, let's get started with our discussion for today. We have a surprise guest to welcome our speaker, Dr. Ausaf Ahsan. So first we'd like to invite Brother Aslam to tell us a little bit about Dr. Ausaf's uh, involvement in Islamic literature. Yeah, we have a very close person to Dr. Alsaf and me uh, going to introduce uh, uh, no, Alsaf on a personal level. Uh, Rizwan, go ahead. Thank you, Brother Aslam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. Awfuka, welcome. Welcome to Man Mabu Club. For those who don't know me, I am Rizwan, Alsaf, Dr. Alsaf's cousin residing in Dallas, Texas. And I've been tasked to personally introduce Dr. Ausaf as he's known to the public for us and the close friends and families, it's always Aufuka. So to start with, I'm not exaggerating if I say Aufuka and books are synonyms. He is a bookworm and have a passion for books from the get go as long as I can remember. It dates back to like his father and my beloved uncle, Dr. M.P. Abu Bakr is a voracious reader. His house used to be a mini library with all sorts of books and magazines from West and Far East. I literally grew, grew up in the midst of that. His grandfather, Aufuka's grandfather, our grandfather, T.P. Kutya Musahib, in spite of all his professional and political and Muslim community accomplishments, was also a voracious reader and uh, <clears throat> have authored many books and articles. So the love and passion for books runs in Aufuka's DNA. So now you know why we have invited him. Uh, dating long time back, I vividly remember when I was a pre-teenager, Aufuka used to enlighten us and entertain us by reading uh, Russian folk stories. I don't know if you remember Russian Nadori Kadaga. We used to look up for that, me and my cousins. It was, we were very little like in uh, single digit years, uh, third grade, fourth grade, and he used to enlighten us with that. Um, fast forwarding a little bit, uh, while he was a student in dentistry in Manipal Dental College, his love of books made him establish a special place called Book Room, where students from Manipal uh, College, uh, Institute, Manipal Institute of Technology and Medical College from all, all walks of life meet, read and discuss about various topics and books. His passion for books eventually led to the birth of other books in Coricord, which publishes and translates multiple uh, books, which he's the founder and the managing director. I don't want to make it too long on a personal note. I would like to end this short introduction by a story from my teenager years. Once uh, when I was a teenager, I approached Afuka with a question I had. Uh, instead of him answering my question directly, he pushed me towards a book or an article and asked me to read about it. And then after that, go, go to him and discuss it. In the hindsight, now I know why he did that, because he was in cult inculcating reading habits in me. Along with the book, Aufuka is also very much fond of uh, Muslim community history, especially in Kerala, and have spearheaded many initiatives to uncover 
and untold contribution of Kerala Muslims in general. So by inviting Aufuka to talk about a book on the early Muslim history in Kerala, I think the organizers have hit the bullseye. So I think I've already exceeded my allotted time so uh, for, for this short introduction. So without much further ado, I would like to hand over this to Brother Aslam to professionally introduce Dr. Ausa Faisal. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Rizwan, for that warm welcome uh, uh, to Ausaf. Uh, I'm sure, uh, Ausaf, uh, you touched some chord uh, within Ausaf, uh, you know, triggered some nostalgic memories of childhood. And I'm glad that uh, we, we, are, we are able to bring you on to welcome him. So on behalf of Nanma Book Club, again, I thank you all for joining the second session of the book club. Roughly uh, two decades back, I came across some high quality Islamic books in English published by Islamic Book Trust Malaysia. These books were of high quality yet affordable price. Interestingly, this publishing house was published by a Koyaka who was originally from Kannur. He had migrated to Malaysia a long time back. He's a person of humility, very utmost humility and comes from a humble financial background but with a lot of passion for Islamic literature. Uh, you can view their publications at uh, ibtbooks.com. Again, ibtbooks.com. Uh, really inspirational collections of books there. In 2004, I reached out to IBT Books to establish an outlet for these books in Kerala. They informed me that a doctor had signed an exclusive agreement a few months back for distributing these books in Kerala. IBT Books put me in touch with that doctor who was Dr. Ausaf. Now, Dr. Ausaf started other books with a vision to bring quality Islamic books to Kerala and publish originally researched books relevant to Muslims and other minorities in India. So far, other books have published more than 100 titles on religion, politics, sociology, history, biographical works, poetry, and even some fiction. I would say that other books have succeeded so far. This success, uh, however, required great sacrifice from the founders, including constant infusion of cash. Anyone who knows a bit about publishing knows that it is very hard to survive in this business. Other books went through existential crisis on multiple occasions. Uh, Dr. Ausaf and the other books team held on because of their passion for giving a platform for the voices of minorities in India. And on a side note, one of the great tragedy happened to Indian Muslims in the last four decades or so is that they ignored humanities in preference for professional degrees in engineering and medicine as the latter were financially and socially attractive. Accumulating wealth become, became the primary focus. This created a dearth of Muslim intellectuals and institutions that were capable of understanding the impact of policies and analyzing and identifying the evolving challenges to the collective life of Muslims. One such institution that was badly needed was a think tank, researching on media, politics, uh, religion, sociology, and impact of government policies on Muslims and minorities. Other books is doing research in some of these areas. I think it's a far kifaya or collective responsibility of Muslims of India to support such works. I request those of you who have been blessed with wealth to consider supporting specific research areas that's of interest to you by sponsoring other books on these topics. Now, other books have initiated uh, original research work on the history of Muslims of Kerala and have published more than half a dozen books in the space, including uh, the book on uh, today's discussion, which is the early history of early Muslims, uh, early history of Muslims in Kerala. One of the earliest written work on the Muslims of Kerala is the Tufatul Mujahideen, which is this book here. And uh, another important book uh, is uh, this one. Educational Empowerment of uh, Kerala Muslims, right? These are uh, two important books they have published. Of course, there are many other important books, other books are published. Now, 
Dr. Ausaf had a clear vision when he established, and they are continuing in that path. And uh, we need uh, to support this kind of work, which is going to be helpful, particularly in the critical juncture we are in. So I congratulate the commendable work Other Books team has done. Without further delay, I pass the floor to Dr. Ausaf. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, let me uh, thank uh, Rizwan and Aslam for, uh, for their generous uh, introduction and warm welcome uh, <clears throat> to the program. I think uh, we have uh, <clears throat> around 30 minutes. I'm trying to stick to that time uh, as much as possible. And if we have anything, of course, I am ready. I'm here. But I don't want to talk beyond that because um, I, 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 I'm not really sure about uh, who all are listening to this. Uh, Maulana Rumi said once, um, a fool, how, how can you identify a fool? A fool is a person who does not know whom he is speaking to. You know? So I don't want to become a fool, according to Maulana Rumi. So I'll try to stop as as you have allotted me 30 minutes, 20 plus five plus five, am, am I right, uh, Alina? Yes, I think yes, I, uh, you have allotted me 30 minutes. Yeah, also, uh, Osaf, I'm just a, uh, yes. just a yeah. just interest, please, please. There, yeah, there's a couple please. of other points, uh, Alina, and uh, yeah. uh, Naz wants to uh, ask yes. prior to jumping onto the book itself. So maybe, you know, please. Uh, let them prod on those topics. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please tell me. No, no, don't apologize. But uh, thank you, Jazakumullah Khair and Brother Aslam and Brother Radwan for the introduction for our amazing guest speaker. And welcome, Dr. Osaf, with that. So, thank let's you get so much. The book. So, okay. since Dr. Ahsan, I mean, Dr. Uh, Osaf Ahsan has come to speak with us today, we wanted to just prepare some context for our audience. So before we talk about the book, we have a few questions about learning our history and the literature. I think for a lot of us, it's easy to forget to learn about our history and dismiss it as something of the past. We were wondering, what would you consider to be the importance of learning about our history? What can we learn from it? All right. Um, I, I, I'll tell you a story again. Um, his name is Umar Farooq Abdullah. He is from Chicago. He runs an institute called Al Navavi Institute. Navavi Institute it is. If you browse, you can find them. A few years ago, uh, Umar F. Abdullah uh, uh, came, up, came over to Calicut. And he told me to take him to a place and show him uh, a bench where Tipu Sultan had sat once, long time ago. Then he said, I just want to pray for him, pray for Tipu Sultan, and sit there. And that was quite close to Kadi. You know Kadi, right? Some English, right? Kadi. Uh, Kadi, then Kadi of Calicut. So, uh, his name is um, um, Kadi Muhammad. Okay. So I took him there. He sat on the bench. He prayed for Tipu Sultan. This is an incident. If you know history, I'll take, first I'll start from Umar F. Abdullah. If you do not know Umar F. Abdullah, it is just another Umar F. Abdullah who came to Kerala and prayed. But he was a white male from Chicago, running an institute. If you know all this, the history of Umar F. Abdullah, then you are adding or gazing deeper and deeper, as I believe. Number two, Kodikod or Calicut. If you know the history of Calicut and the sea, because sea brought Islam to Kerala and Calicut and Malabar, because on one side we have mountains, we can't run away from there, Kerala. And on the other side, we have an ocean, can jump into the sea and swim, it is difficult. So we are caught in between and we have 44 rivers cutting across Kerala. So in fact, before Ford, um, um, 
invented motor car, it was difficult. We were using bullock carts, but crossing the rivers were even difficult. So ocean decided the future. So the geographic strategic placement of Cori code is very, very important in this incident to understand, to have a deeper understanding of this institution. Number in incident. Number three, Kazi. Who is a Kazi? Why Kazi is Kazi is Kazi is important? Arabic we say Kazi, and in Urdu and Farsi we say Kazi. So he was a judge at that time, and he is no more a judge. There is only uh, 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 he decides on moon sighting now, or maybe he'll go for a nikah. That's all. Kazi's uh, um, jurisdiction has reduced to that level now. But you should know who was a Kazi then. Then the importance again. And the last point is Tipu. Who was Tipu? That one should know. In 1700s, Tipu came crossing the mountains to, to Malabar. And he involved, intervened in many vital uh, areas, social, political, religious areas. Then you understand what is the importance of this dua of Umar of Abdullah. That is the importance of learning history, I believe. I hope I have answered your question. Yes, that definitely makes sense. Uh, looking at our history is important to get a deeper understanding of whatever we're looking at. And in this case, it's our background and our shared, our shared story. So with that, uh, when we try to look into our history, I think we can find a lot of literature and a lot of different sources. So we were wondering, where does this book fall? What, what place does this hold in other sources and literature about Kerala Muslim history? Uh, on history, uh, there's an important book uh, called What is History, written by C.H. Carr, uh, if you have studied. I mean, one of you is a political science uh, student, I believe. Yeah, so um, C.H. Carr uh, says about an incident, and he elaborates upon it in his book. It's an old one, old work, old text. What is history? He is a text. So history can be objective. We say it, we should be objective, but no. A every written history is... Because if you write on Taj Mahal, you talk about Shah Jahan first, right? Similarly, if you talk about the United States, you talk, talk about Columbus first, right? But, but there are... These theories are deeply flawed, or the vision, I mean, views are deeply flawed. So when uh, you look at history, Indian history or history of Malabar, let us take some scholars, two, three scholars, so that we can understand. Professor K. N. Panikkar, on an incident called Malabar Revolt in 1921, okay, uh, where Mapilas of Malabar, that are the, those are Muslims of Malabar, fought against the British. And Panikkar, false under Marxist uh, uh, historians. He says this was an agrarian revolution or agrarian revolt. The farmers, of course, yes, that was one of the reasons. But most of the fighters were Mapilas. But he says he has written a book called Against the Lord and the State. In that book, he says, and there are many other scholars as well I mean, who are following this, so that is one. And secondly, you take another, another scholar, R.H. Hitchcock. Hitchcock said Maplas are fanatics. These fanatics should be taught a lesson in his book. Again, he was a British servant who was working in Malabar. So he can't write another history. You know, you know he can't look from no other sides except the British side. So Hitchcock's history is that way. Panikkar sir's history, Panikkar, whom I know personally, and uh, Ken Panikkar sir, uh, or we call him in respect, like we uh, here we call them sir, all right? So Professor Ken Panikkar always supported us, the other books, for bringing out books on history. Number three, Damodha Savarkar. Mm -hmm. Savarkar is the man, you if you have heard of RSS, RSS is a synonym of KKK, 
for you easy easy to understand the mm, mm, uh, ultra nationalists some people call them like white supremacists you call them in the kkk ku klux klan so similarly we have rss here he is uh, an ideologue of rss he has written a book in hindi called mopla there they say only muslims killing hindus that's all they see only this nothing else and that is a kind of semi fiction so that is another view ultra nationalist view of history and there are nationalist writings also like keshav menon um, uh, he he has written crusading for a cause reminiscence uh, reminiscing 1921 that is another one so there are many views so where do we stand that's a question we don't have tools recently in 1982 a group of historians from india started writing that is called subaltern history because they look from below if you are talking about pyramid they don't look from above they look from below and they write the history of people who brought these stones to build the pyramid not the king who, who assigned the job to them so we are trying to look from below to understand 1921 mapla revolt right so these are the sources you have marxist sources you have colonial sources you have ultra nationalist sources you have nationalist sources and you have a big gap when you talk about muslim sources please yeah that's um when i read the book it was kind of like all these sources from other people who have cited the mapla muslim in kerala that was how the book was structured and i was um i was really shocked to see how uh jbp more was able to take context from each source and place it and then kind of like timeline match it to see if this source was credible based on another source and i think i think that was amazing so uh thank you for that um and the i just had one comment about what you said about the kkk and the rss about the different perspectives of like how they note down history there's like ultranationalists there's the colonial people and i think that really puts it into perspective of how big the gap is and how much we need to discover not discover that gap per se but um learn from that gap so that we don't fall into it i hope that makes sense so um we're tying that into my next question so while some of us have read the book some of us haven't would you be able to give us some context as to where in kerala history this book takes place since it doesn't cover the entire history we'd like to get an idea of where this book falls in place in that timeline uh in the title itself he 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 talks about it i mean he says it that is 1700 700 ad to 1800 ad that is uh, advent of islam he is trying to dig deeper to understand the advent of islam to kerala uh even though um, theoretically we would uh, we might as well disagree with him uh, uh, when he says the beginning of islam or uh, when islam you know uh, believers always believe that islam was always there that is another take uh, i mean uh, keeping that apart what i am saying is he starts from the advent of islam in kerala discussing chairman perumal and things like that one and he goes to uh, uh, 1600 that's important because the colonial period starts from 1500s early 1500s 1498 um vasco da gama landed in calicut so in calicut itself nowhere else actually so um from there slowly the muslim learning centers like pannani when uh, earlier uh, uh, he showed the the uh, book tahfatul mujahideen uh, was written by uh, uh, zainuddin maqdum the second he was taught and he learned in pannani 
So the such uh, centers started going, I mean, waning out or slowly disappeared because of um, Dutch, British, Portuguese, and French, French. All these people, one by one, started landing. So 1700, I mean, 1600 is that period. So he is dealing with the advent of Islam to the colonial period. In between, uh, he is trying to write, trying to find sources. So um, uh, he is trying to locate uh, the Islam's position or Muslims' uh, position in Malabar, but he is calling it Kerlam. There is a problem with this, okay? Because always, historically, uh, sometimes he, he says, and Arab writers or Persian writers or Muslim writers have identified it as up till Koilon, Kollam. But the, sociologically, there are a lot of differences between Travancore, Cochin, and Malabar. So this we have to understand. That is a limitation of the book, but, but still, uh, we, when we discuss it, let us discuss as Kerala, because Kerala, uh, he calls it Kerala. So we uh, let us say it is Kerala, including Travancore, Cochin, and Malabar. So this is how he is discussing um, uh, in this. This is the period, uh, time period he, he he puts forth and discusses Islam. I think I have answered to your question, or have I got the question? Yes, am I right? That, I mean, is that fine? Yes, that yes. answers our question. Thank you. It helps us okay, to understand okay. um, what what time period this book is talking about and some of the events of that time period. Um, so at this point, we'd love to get some of your thoughts on this book, maybe a brief summary on it and some of your critiques about it as well. Before I uh, <clears throat> begin with the book, I, I should take this opportunity to thank uh, Nanma Trustees for uh, calling me to talk on this or discuss uh, this topic. And also the board of directors, uh, again, for inviting me and you people, the book club volunteers. Uh, for organizing such a wonderful uh, meeting because people read, uh, people say, generally they believe that people are reading less, but our experience is the other way around. I mean, we see people reading. A lot of youngsters are reading a lot these days and serious reading has increased. This is what we've, we, we, we have experienced. So thank you all for uh, asking me to present uh, on this book. I have met JBP more uh, several times. His name is, uh, he is from Maharashtra, actually. Maharashtra is a state of, I mean, central state of India, where from where he went to um, uh, Paris, where he got educated and he did his research and so on and so forth. His wife is from Kannur, Malayali. Uh, so I had been to his place once uh, to meet him, to sign the contract and things like that on this book. And this book was published in 2011. Uh, you might have seen it, just 250 pages. Uh, it has got uh, an introductory part, first part, uh, two parts. He has divided it into two parts. In fact, when he submitted the manuscript, there was a third part also. That was Tuhifatul Mujahideen, uh, translated by Rolandson to English. That we, uh, uh, we told him we'll edit it out because then the book will become so, so bulky that people won't be able to handle it. Uh, and Kindle was not that popular during that time. Uh, it was 2010, 2019, 11, the book came out. So you have an introductory uh, introduction, the advent of Islam, 700 to 1200 AD, and the growth of Islam. He has again divided it into that. And the legend of Chairman Perumal, fourth chapter. And the fifth chapter, Vasco da Gama and Sheikh Zainuddin the second. Um, I believe, and uh, six is his con con concluding remarks. In part two, he has given some notes along with Rollinson's translation. That part is not very important, so I'll uh, not venture to that part uh, that seriously. In Malabar, uh, if you see, uh, look at the history of Malabar, so many people came here, Greeks, Romans, he says that Hello. whatever I am. Hello, do you serve uh, breakfast now? Yes, sir. Do you have Hello? 
Hello. 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 Can I get uh, three masala dosa? Hello. Three masala dosa. And one ghee roast. Yeah. Hey, Samad Bhai, uh, curl can read in the data if you are ordering order for all of us. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. Even, even though masala, masala yeah. dosa is. Yeah, it's muted now. Uh, I think it is muted. One second. Uh... Okay. Uh, uh, am I audible? Yes. yes. Am I audible? Yes. All right. All right. Oh, I, I think the host muted everyone. Now? Yeah. Continue. All right. Yeah, yeah, now. Fine. Um, right. right. Yeah. So um, uh, Greeks came a uh, long time ago here. Again, I told you Romans came then later. Chinese came here. Uh, Arabs before Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So uh, people came in waves here because of the ocean on one side. Until up, uh, up until re recently, people were studying only about uh, the land here in Kerala because the, hist uh, the uh, learning of history was in the hands of upper caste, upper caste Hindus. When I say upper caste, it is Hindus mostly, uh, the upper caste Hindus. There are, if you are aware of caste system, fine. Otherwise, I'll give a brief later. So um, the, the, the issue is they studied on, on, only on land because they can't travel on sea. It was prohibited for Brahmins and even Nairs uh, to travel on sea. So they, they don't sail. Then left, uh, the two communities left are Christians and Muslims. So they used to sail. Obviously, the importance of sea was for these two communities. So Greeks came, Romans came, Chinese came, Arabs came, and this, this waves, wave continued. <clears throat> that is the importance of uh, Calicut, in fact. So you have to, uh, he starts by saying in his introduction uh, that systematic history writing, he, he talks about all that, and he says, uh, on Malabar, there is no, they started writing history very, very late. That is, he says, 11th century AD. And prior to that, what you have is certain inscriptions here and there, uh, or um, uh, some copper plates given by certain important people to others. That was how history was read before. Now it is changing rapidly changing. So what we see is there is a flurry of, a lot of uh, travelers came to Kerala, like Sul Suleiman Tajir, he says in that, in 850 AD, Abdul uh, Masudi, 950 AD, Al-Biruni, you all know him, in 11th uh, uh, century, then Amir Khusro in 13th century, then Ibn Battuta in 14th century, and Abdul Razak in 15th century. So it is, and these are the people who had uh, recorded uh, writings um, with us, you know, their recorded writings are with us. There were many others and still uh, those writings are waiting to be unearthed. All these writings were in Arabic. Why? I would say that- Why should they? Yeah. Because uh, uh, the Arabs and the people in the Middle East, they were really good at note taking in literature and taking like writing down history, just like the Europeans. Okay, okay. right. So uh, this uh, practice of noting down was taken from them and uh, trans I mean uh, 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 relayed to the Europeans later as you said, exactly, excellent. So that is how it is. But again, there is another reason. Tuhafat al-Mujahideen also was written in Arabic. He was born and brought up here, Sheikh Zainuddin in 16th century. All this, like what I said, Sulaiman Tajir, Masoodi, Al-Biruni, they were all Arabs or Persians. 
hey, there are Arabs or Persians, mostly Persians or Central Asian side. They travel through the land mostly or sometimes through the sea. So why that, do you know? He, he has mentioned it in his uh, book, why it happened. Because uh, Sheikh Zainuddin was, he, he guesses that he was born and brought up here. Kyle Patnam, the other side of India, the uh, eastern coast of India, and they came over to Ponani. So he wrote it in Arabic because Malayalam was yet to be born. Malayalam was not born in 16th century. It was just evolving. Um, and its, uh, its sister language, Tamil, was, I mean, it's a very old language. Malayalam is the sister language of Tamil. Malayalam slowly evolved from Tamil. And the writings, the scripts, we call the Lippi, the scripts, uh, developed slowly. Malayalam script. So most of the scholars spoke either in Arabic, if they are Muslims, or in Sanskrit, if they are Brahmins, and there was no Malayalam. There was a local language which they used to communicate. It had, it had no uh, 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 written uh, format or no script until that, that stage. That's what I wanted to mention. So he, he explains all these travelers to us and he says there was no practice of writing history. So it is very difficult to find out sources. I'll tell you a story again. His cousin, Sheikh Zainuddin's cousin, okay, his name is Khazi Muhammad, I told. His cover is here in Calicut now. Tombstone, you can, you can see Khazi Muhammad. He died in 1500s. He wrote a book. Okay. He wrote a book uh, called Fathul Mubin. Fathul Mubin, you all know Arabic. May, at least many of you can understand. Fathul is victory. Mubin is manifest. Fathul Mubin is manifest victory. When the Portuguese attacked Calicut, that is Chalium, which is near to Calicut, a port, uh, uh, the Nair cavalry from um, one side and the naval arcade of Kunyali Marakkar. Kunyali was uh, Kuny Ali, okay? Kunyali was the naval chief of Zamarin. They had a hit and run technique. Small boats, they come hit and run. That's what they do. So they attacked Portuguese from the sea, on the sea. And on the other side, cavalry Nairs came in. And this Maulana sat in the mosque and wrote about this victory. And Portuguese were defeated there. And the book evolved. That is uh, Fatwil Mubin, Manifest Victory. And the fort was destroyed and the Portuguese were uh, taken to captivity. So this book, we were searching, we were planning to translate. Our plan was to get it into English. But somebody told us, uh, Professor John, John Ochandurut, he was a professor of history in Calicut University. He said, we have it in archives, in, uh, in Hyderabad archives. So it was translated by a British, actually, anonymous. We have written on the book, anonymous. Translator is anonymous. Britishers had already translated it, the Fatul Mubin. So what I'm trying to say is, it was not in Malayalam. And then after a while, Arabic Malayalam evolved. They wanted to write Malayalam. They used Arabic script to write. Muslims were using it uh, until recently. All right. So what I, again, these sources, to reach to these sources, it is extremely cumbersome. It's not possible at times because you don't know the language, the old Arabic sometimes, or the tough Farsi sometimes, sometimes this Arabic Malayalam also. Many researchers, Western researchers, they are searching for uh, our small Maulanas here to, for them to get it translated so that do, so they can do research on these. So writing history was a difficult thing at that time. And uh, we have only Tuhfat al-Mujahideen by Sheikh Zainuddin Maktoum and uh, Tahrir by his granddad Maktoum the first and Qazi Muhammad and many. So we are, what we are doing is primarily, we are trying to locate these sources and bring it in English. So when we bring it out in English, we, we are not talking about anything else. We are talking about 16th century and this is, these are the resources, right? So he then quotes Edward Said, Edward W. Said, he is a very, very popular uh, person for his Orientalism. Um, uh, 
that is our JBP More, and he says he sympathizes with him uh, and colonies, colonizers never allowed an agency for the, the, uh, the natives here, agreed. But he says, I am very objective. There I have some problems. Do you think anybody can be objective? I can't be objective because uh, I was uh, born in a Muslim family and I was brought up as a Muslim. I can try to be objective, that's all. But my, my history will always follow me. This is what I believe. And we, we should try to be objective, but uh, one can't claim to be objective. Any questions, please, in between, please? And then uh, I will. I just had a short, uh, just a, like a little question that there's like a conflict, what happened in the book and what sources of, not what happened in the book, but the details and information presented in the book versus the information presented on the internet. Um, but we only have, three to four more minutes before we have to wrap this up. So I'll say it quickly. And if you do want to answer it, please do. Um, but the question is, um, given the sources of Cheruman Perumal, the internet sources say that he went to Mecca for pilgrimage and he converted to a Muslim. But in the book, it states that there are no such sources that support that um, um, support that claim or deny that claim or um, claim that Chirman Parumal have has converted to Islam, Jainism, other like um, Christianity, those religions. So what is your take on that? The contradicting of the information on the book and on the internet? Uh, it's, it's not, uh, first of all, uh, let us uh, search for that that re, uh, source of uh, the news, uh, which is which you have read on internet, I do not know which what is from where exactly you got. I mean, which is your link? Please share the link with me so that I can verify. One, number two, JBP More's view. JBP More, uh, it is uh, his view. He is very close to MGS Narayanan. He quotes MGS Narayanan in the book. That is the period. And the Perumal, Perumals were second Chera dynasty, he says, that is in 12th century. Then how can it be? So they are talking about the period. The period is not right. So how can he see the splitting of moon? And the splitting of moon, I mean, as told by people that Cheraman has had seen, is not recorded. Now, Everything, if they say everything should be recorded, there is a problem. Because only king's history is recorded, not the slave's history. In Kerala, we, he himself says, Pulayar's history is not recorded. Parayar's, they are all um, uh, uh, scheduled castes or scheduled tribe as called by the British. Uh, their history is not recorded. But... Nair's history is recorded somewhat because they were warriors and they were an influential caste. And Muslims' uh, history was recorded because they were uh, merchants and they had some give and take with others, somewhat. So those history which are not histories, which are not written, right? Uh, where to check for? The blacks who, who, who died in many plantations, their history is not written anywhere. Alex Haley had to search, seven, go seven generations, and he depended on oral history to write the roots, right? And Haley sat with Malcolm X and listened to him and wrote biography of Malcolm X. It was not recorded. He recorded it as per Malcolm X said. Similarly, we had many Malcolm X's here, like Ayangali, who was an organic intellectual who fought for Pulayas. His history was not written. And we were the first publisher to bring the biography of Ayangali in English. So what I'm trying to say is that uh, written history is okay, fine, well and good. But Chairman Perumal, 
personally i believe he has gone to makkah i can believe right then now that let them call it a myth no problem then this myth i am searching for evidences and he uh, saw the moon splitting because i believe that moon uh, was rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam did this i believe that what is wrong in believing that he saw it and he followed it but now they say there is no evidence for either of this or neither you can prove this nor there so let us debate so their view also is, is to it should be contested even though they are uh, uh, big time authors big time historians so let us start writing the history from below this is what we are saying right i think i have answered in a, in, a, in a, this is this is a big topic which you have just <laughs> gave it to me I, I to answer yes. no 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 problem it's it's a big debate here here whether chairman has gone there or not uh, because there is a, a hadith which he has given uh, a ginger to rasulullah adrak in urdu they call is uh, 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 you know Uh, uh, and Rasulullah said, "This is from India, and all that." They depend on that hadith uh, to say that Chairman uh, 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 Bermal lived in that era. So, whether this this hadith is Hassan or it's uh, it's reliable, again, hadith, the science, uh, uh, we have to we have to talk to them, and then this research is going to go on. But we have decided one thing: we are going to go for. Uh, 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 graphic novel on Chairman Birmal, <laughs> and right, Chairman Birmal saw this. A graphic novel in uh, on Chairman Birmal. Right, please. Anything more? Well, I, it's time to wrap it up, but I'll hand it over. Hand over the platform to Alina, so we can continue. Um, yeah, so I think a common theme in what you've been sharing is uh, to make sure that we're looking at the sources of our history um, and understanding how power dynamics, politics, and economics can take a place in um, changing the perspectives of how history is written. So with that, um, we'd love to get any other thoughts you might have on this book, um, anything you might want to share with us, um, since we have about 10 minutes um, for to hear from you. And I think a lot of people have been enjoying this discussion. Yeah, I just Thank wanted you. to uh, uh, interject here a minute. So don't worry. I, I think uh, we started a little bit late. So Ausaf, if you think you have substantial uh, uh, points to share, or we can extend the session for a few more minutes. So Alina and Nas uh, don't feel constrained by that. Okay. So just uh, continue with your uh, awesome, uh, awesome discussion. Thank you. Um, uh, here I see a comment uh, uh, from... Isa Yaqub, uh, Mr. Isa, Isa Yaqub, uh, that is the tomb uh, in Oman. Yes, the tomb of Cheraman. It is said to be in Oman. I can only say said to be in Oman because it is contested. We say that yes, but uh, some historians say that uh, it is a hearsay. So that is that is the I mean that is that is the contestation between these two. scholars okay um uh, uh, uh okay so uh, that is one thing and i uh, what i personally would like to again uh, say apart from what he has written there are uh, uh, 250 pages uh, book is difficult to uh, put it in a nutshell in such a short while but uh, i would like to uh, uh, especially to the youth uh, i i would like to say that uh, you should ask uh, where are you from and who are your uh, parents i mean where they came from i mean everybody uh, they will talk about this so uh, and the parents should support them to write uh, history listen to their grandparents uh, and uh, record the oral history and uh, 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 you can you can again write uh, that is transcribe th those those files it's easy now everywhere it is ai so you just talk to them it's written and you have a, a written document about your family's history and search for old books in your old tarawards when you go back natle tarawadle chelpo it is possible that you find some 
some old manuscripts. Please do not throw it away. It's very, very precious, very precious. Even a page is precious. Even a letter is precious. Uh, so we need all that because we have to prove, we have to prove many things uh, 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 which uh, some historians uh, uh, have uh, written as history, uh, but it's not history anymore. Uh, we are questioning it and we have uh, a lot of uh, documents uh, from uh, 16th and 15th century now not only muslims i'm not not only talking about muslims but the subalterns all those who are uh, uh, have no written history here so please uh, search for it and try to coordinate among yourselves and then uh, <clears throat> try to see how you can bring it out and we are there. We are always there. It's not that we should publish it, but uh, 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 we all should collectively uh, try for this because it's it's tough times here. The whole history is uh, is put it in black and white, and then all all white is uh, uh, are painted black now. And they say that this is uh, this is the history, and you have to learn this. Uh, at that, in, 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 in such a difficult time, we we need even a, uh, if you get a page, that page is very precious for us, I think. Yes. Thank you. Um, so we want to give some time for the audience to ask some questions. So if anyone in the audience has questions, please put them in the chat um, and we'll try to get to them as they come in. We might not get to them all, but um, we'll get through the ones we can. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll read out a question uh, in, in the sequence that uh, we perceive it in chat. Uh, can you please give an insight on where Malik bin Dinar stands in Kerala Muslim history? Uh, uh, Malik bin Dinar's uh, Khabar, oh. you see, uh, yeah, hello. Uh, uh, yeah. Hello, uh, I'll stop, just, uh, uh, wanted, yes. just want to tag yes. on to that question when you answer, if you could uh, add that to us well. That, there are different Malik bin Dinars. So you may want to even yeah. address that one Malik bin Dinar died in Yemen and one we said to be you know, yeah. buried in Kasragod. So I think there are different yeah. Malik bin Dinar in different generations. So if you contextualize that as well would be helpful. And that's that's what I am. I was trying to say. I mean, uh, uh, this uh, Malik bin Dinar and 12 of his disciples coming to uh, Kerala and uh, constructing mosques around uh, is again a part of the history, our oral history here, and we do not have uh, written evidences, but we have tombstones or headstones uh, in some places where, uh, especially like uh, in some mosques where we see, like in Kollam we had, uh, in um, Madai we have. So these these kind of tombstones, and even in uh, in uh, near Kannur, uh, the eastern part of Kannur, Sri Gandabaram, we have some headstones. Uh, with headstones, we have to sit and calculate and write and bring it out. So it is extremely difficult. I mean, I am not an historian. I am basically do my work with teeth. You know, you know, I am a dentist by profession, and I teach dentistry in a dental school. So, uh, so uh, certain uh, questions are very tricky now. Because they want to say even Chairman Perumal was not ex he 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 was not at all present in the history. We should erase uh, Chairman Perumal from the history. There is another school saying that. So Malik Dinar's when you ask Malik Dinar, Malik Dinar has come and he has built mosques and these mosques are quite old and those headstones and tombstones are very old, but we are yet to have a proper study of headstones and tombstones. Even though we have the study of British tombstones uh, in three volumes now, uh, uh, that is uh, already published in Kerala, uh, the, the naval chiefs and the, the higher, higher uh, order uh, Britishers uh, who, who have served in army and navy, they have uh, such books here. But our tombstones are studied only separately by some individuals. So these uh, tom uh, headstones uh, should be studied and then we, we can somewhat say uh, where exactly and some, some people say, okay, his hand was buried here. Some others say 
that is even about uh, uh, Imam Hussein also, the people say, you know, in, 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 in Cairo, you saw a cover of Imam Hussein or Hussein Daldirbao and, and you see his cover elsewhere also. So similarly, here in Kerala, when it is a hearsay, when uh, we say the history is oral, there could be many versions. Then like in Hadith, science of Hadith, we have to accumulate this or collect this and then uh, decipher out and come out with theories. And these theories will be contested. There is no problem. So I have no final word. Nobody has said a final word about history anywhere. Let us revise. This is, this is what I can say, uh, not more. I, can, I can't say a scholarly comment on uh, Malik bin Dinar as of now. I haven't read it anywhere. At least I can say that. Am I... Yes. Audible again? Yes. 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 Um, thank you. So I think that was the main question that we had in the chat. I'm not seeing any others at the moment. So we just want to ask if you had any final takeaways for us. Um, I think sharing our history and looking for any sources we may have and valuing that uh, written history is a main point that I've gotten from this. Um, but if you have anything else to share with us, we'd love to hear. And if you'd also like to talk about your work at other books, um, for a little bit, I think a lot of us are interested in that as well. Um, yeah, you, you can take five have, minutes also uh, to uh, yes, talk yes. about uh, other books, other other books work, and uh, what you really want to accomplish, and what you think, uh, given where Muslim society is there in Kerala, uh, you know, what do you think we should prioritize from a fundamental research perspective, right? So uh, your passion, mm -hmm. and what uh, we as a diaspora can do to help that. Um, because 19 years, almost 20 years now, uh, you are asking me to talk in five minutes. People give me time and then I, I get tired talking about other books. So it is extremely difficult for me to tell you what we are doing. And we have published, that's, that part is already uh, uh, done I mean, by Aslam uh, uh, earlier on. Uh, so what uh, I would like to say is right now we are working on a book uh, which is called uh, uh, um, uh, Adkia, which is taught in Madaris uh, to teach akhlaq, the character, right? Character of people. So this book we are, uh, it is in the final stages, it will go to the press uh, soon. This is also written by Makhdoom. Okay. So people are coming here to study now. Uh, about Muslims of Malabar and the history of Muslims, uh, of course, Christians also. Uh, so this, uh, we need uh, the research uh, focus, like, like people, uh, uh, you said uh, you are doing your, uh, like uh, Alina, yes, you are doing a political science degree, right? I mean, your yep. graduation is, uh, yes. So um, look to us, uh, to to this uh, uh, this part of the world, and we want people to do research on these topics where we have initiated discussion, because we it, it, we have a lot of limitations, lots and lots of limitation limitations. Not just money, uh, but people, experts, right, and political problems. Uh, so you can circumvent many of these problems, and it 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 need not be other books. Probably we'll die out in, in four or five years. Uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, if Allah wills, we'll continue, inshallah. Otherwise, we may die out. But these, uh, whatever we have done uh, so far, like 100 uh, uh, texts, 100 books, or at least 15 books on the Muslim, I mean, history of Muslims in Kerala, that has to be, I mean, uh, it, it, uh, it, it should go on. Because with the inter advent of internet, uh, English has become a very important language now. First, it was because of colonization and it was slowly dying out. But now, again, with the internet, it has become so, so important. So we have to translate, we have to provide what we have here now. So for that, we need, you know, need to join hands. How to join hands is up to you because you, you should take, take stock of, uh, of your resources. It's not always money. Once we start working, money comes in. So what I am trying to say is, 
uh, we need to write let there be marx marxist interpretation let there let there be alternationalist interpretation as i told in the beginning let there be all kinds of interpretations but let us see from a muslim perspective also the history and for that again a person like me i am 57 now uh, there are problems because i can't understand what you are talking sometimes you know even the jargon which you use or uh, the way you type i can't so uh, it has to come from those who are in 20 in their 20s and 30s then it will go forward faster much faster this is what i have uh, i i have to tell everybody everybody anybody can contribute anybody can contribute it's it's not the question of uh, writing a book or something but let us uh, let us uh, widen the network and talk about uh, muslims of kerala the history of muslims in kerala that is your roots our roots and what not i mean this is this is this is what i have to tell you and i i i should thank you so much for very patiently listening and this is uh, on this sunday uh, i know you people had many other programs other than this uh, for me it is night 9 uh, almost 10 o'clock here 10 pm here but for you it is not it is morning right so i don't want to hold uh, hold you more to this i don't know uh, i'm ready but uh, aslam i think uh, right it's true that much of the history of kerala can be found in tohfatul mujahideen uh, noor mohammed noor mohammed khalid is my friend hello uh, are you there <laughs> uh, um, brother yes. Yes. Uh, we will yes. we will collect the question and we have taken their phone numbers and you know we'll we'll personally you know get those answers from you because if we continue i think um the session yes. is going to extend and um yeah yes 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 okay um so uh, uh please uh, share it uh, with me so that uh, i can go back and check and then uh, give the other details i mean if they have any counter questions again that that too can be uh, addressed by us if not me my colleagues also thank so you for organizing it yes please Uh, Jazakallah khair. Thank you so much uh, for taking your time and speaking with us. Um, and hopefully, all of us can find a way to get involved um, with this type of reading and research and keeping this work going. Um, I think we have one final thought from um, Brother Assam that he'd like to share with you, and then we will wrap this up. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so, Assam, uh, Jazakallah khair. Thank you for outstanding discussion and insight, and also our uh, brilliant uh, young. uh ladies and our daughters and alhamdulillah you have done an outstanding job uh interacting and discussing with ausaf uh ausaf can you share us since you have been working in this field can you share us whether in india or uh, not not just kerala also as a whole india itself are there any other uh, organization that is doing fundamental research Uh, on these kind of issues you know impacting muslims and also the minorities right also the history aspect uh, because as is rightly said uh, history is written uh, with a perspective now are there enough muslims of rigor and uh, uh, deeper academic uh, qualifications uh, uh, doing any work if you can share that as that would help us and if not uh, that is a dangerous uh, uh, situation for us right so just uh, kind to of share your thoughts and understanding and insight on that uh, uh brother also we in, in, in just just uh, we would yeah, appreciate please. if we could uh, you could uh, you know complete it in 5 minutes I'm sorry for interrupting but in 5 yeah. minutes you could answer that sure sure so. yes yes uh, oh, I, i do not know about any institute which is working like uh, in that line but i uh, i know for sure that there are departments in india uh department of history department of political science where good guides are guiding many phd students many many phd students who are doing a lot of research on kerala and muslims of kerala and uh, uh, other minorities uh, i i don't usually use that term so that's why i am not using minority so uh, other uh, communities uh, as well so these researchers are uh, like in iit chennai they are doing Uh, uh in hcu hyderabad they are doing 
they are doing in uh, many DU, Delhi universities. They are doing, but not in a uh, uh, under one umbrella. It's not possible uh, given the political uh, situation. Now. They are doing separately. So that's the situation. I am. I. I have. I have taken only three minutes, uh, uh, Mr. Saman. Please. <laughs> Jazakallah um, and Dr. Ostaf on the array of topics I've talked about. Thank you for all the questions of, uh, the audience have put. This has made a lively, your questions have made a lively event. Um, <clears throat> you have given our audience an amazing experience with your wise words. And audience, if you have any further questions, please, uh, as um, uh, Brother Abdus Samad has said that the numbers are given, please contact Dr. Ostaf if you have any more questions to connect more with your heritage. So on that note, I would like to promote our social media because this platform that we are um, organizing and we are um, like, what's the word, sorry. We are basically connecting with uh, Malayali Muslims across the nation and Canada to give more information about the events that are happening. So this event was widely advertised to many youth, many people who are following Instagram. So if you are, please follow at Nanma online and you will get more notifications on what's to come. So to conclude today's event, I'd like to invite Brother Abdus Samad to give us a conclusion note. <laughs> Uh, Jazakallah khair for this informative session, Dr. Ausaf. Um, Jazakallah khair, Sister Anina, Sister Naz, for making this session lively by uh, hosting it and engaging with our guests. Uh, Jazakallah khair, Brother Aslam and Brother Ridwan, for introducing our guest. Uh, we learned a lot about our history today. Uh, one of the most interesting facts about us Muslims, that is, we are, we are different from any other religious community. Every aspect of our life is defined by Islam. An example here is that uh, we come from a land to which Islam is not native. Yet when we define our history, the first thing that crosses our mind is our Islamic history. In the time of constant attacks, when the fascist leaning Indian government is trying to erase our presence physically, and the left leaning, you could say Kerala government and crowd is trying to erase our or dilute our presence intellectually, this session is of very significant one of the one of the way it is done was mentioned by brother Rausa that it is by muddying our history so that we don't have um, we don't have exact understanding of where we came from what our objectives and our, basically our lineage our life i would like to remind us that uh, being uh, muslim is one of our greatest blessings that allah has bestowed on us Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in chapter 49, verse 17, the believers, he talks about Muslims, are regard their acceptance of Islam as a favor to you, O Rasulullah. Tell them, O Prophet, do not regard your Islam as a favor to me. Rather, Islam is a favor Allah has bestowed by guiding you to the faith, if indeed you are faithful. My final words for today, is a reminder for me and for you to constantly thank Allah for the blessing of Islam and for the ancestor who came, Muslim ancestors who came to uh, our land. Thank you once again for joining us. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Alaykum wa